Bills Niners had statement wins, definition of statement wins in week eight. There were probably a couple other teams in action that you could put on that list. So let's take a pick, put, a, put them up on the board. Biggest statement win on week eight so far. Peter, who do you got? The Miami Dolphins made a statement yeah. yesterday. And I want to talk about the Dolphins for a moment because I know their fans are watching the show and it's like, Talk about Dolphins were down in this game. And all we all season long, I said, is there going to be that game where Tua has to just say, hey, trust me, put it on my arm, and I'll get the job done. I could win in a shootout if I have to against Mahomes and Allen and all those guys. And yesterday, it was. They didn't run the ball like they used to. They were throwing the ball yesterday. Tua Tungavailoa was that dude. He threw for more than 350 yards. He's got the number one passer rating in the NFL. And let me put this out there. They came back in this game, and they won, and it was against a downtrodden Lions team. Say what you want. Tua's passes were beautiful, like beautiful, the most catchable ball you can imagine. And here's what I'll say. The Dolphins' record right now in games that Tua has started and completed is 5-0. and You took that 5-0 and record, and you look at what they can do. You come out of this thing, statement win. The rest of the league kind of skeptical. What is this team? Who are they? Tua, with his arm and using those two wonderful wide receivers, Waddle and Hill, to their best of their abilities, I will say this. I needed to see that Tua game where he led them. His arm led them. It wasn't just the defense and the running game. And we saw it. Dolphins looked legit, and I like the fact they had to come back on the road, and they still got the W. Dolphins, biggest statement win. They can hang with these big dogs in the AFC. I really believe it. If they play like that in Tua, a lot of us were wrong on what you can do through the air. I like it, Peter. They needed it. They got it. You know who really, really needed to win? The Denver Broncos. They got one. I don't know if you watched that game. It's in London. It was very early in the morning, especially on the West Coast. You likely did not watch it. It doesn't matter. They went to London, It's and everyone is just ready with all of their jokes and all of their memes, and they are the punchline of the NFL. Their quarterback, their head coach, their everything. They'd lost four games in a row. I don't care if they won two to nothing against a high school team. They got a win in an NFL game because everyone would have just killed them again if they lost this one. High knees this and high knees that. It used to be high expectations for this team. I don't, again, it's a win, it's a win, it's a win. I can't think of a team in terms of the media right now in the last few years that has needed a win this badly. It would be nice if a lot of more people saw it, and maybe they will, but I don't care. The Broncos also going now into the bye, so they're just going to sit there. If they had gone to the bye at 5-0 and and it's nothing but two more weeks of high knees jokes, you just can't abide it. they got to win. Respect to them. Respect to Russ. Respect to Hackett, too. I'm glad to see they got it. For sure. Hackett needed that win. So much going on with the Denver Broncos. So many people saying so many different things. And... The same can be said for the Atlanta Falcons. All in the preseason and training camp and all of that, no one gave the Falcons a chance. And Arthur Smith told us then, everybody's writing our obituary. Arthur, tell them why and show these guys and show the passion that you had way back after the first game of the season. I love this clip. Obituary uh, back in, in May. And you'll continue to write our obituary. Who cares? Because we got 16 games, and if we don't learn from this and get better, write whatever you all want. The same guys that you guys ranked as 45th, you buried us in May. Bury us again. We don't care. We'll get back to work. Thank you. Says it right there. I love that. He says it right there. You can bury us in May. You can bury us now. They lost the opening game to the Saints. Saints come back in the fourth quarter. But the Falcons are starting to figure things out. They're finding their identity. They're running the ball. The game yesterday, it wasn't pretty. Yes, it took a D.J. Moore uh, penalty after scoring a touchdown. They missed two field goals. But they continue to fight. They go on to win that game. And they're at the top of the NFC. Resilient. Yeah. They are resilient. They are the leaders yeah. in that division. Not Brady, not the Bucks, not the Saints, who some people in the preseason, including myself, were saying Dennis Allen, they're going to find a way. It's the Atlanta Falcons with Marcus Mariota, a quarterback that a lot of people wrote off as well, figuring it out. And I was with Arthur, I said it before, in Tennessee. He's a guy who knows how to get it done, challenges his players, and they rally around him. He was clashing beers with him. They were writing mm-hmm. on a bitch, right? Mm-hmm. Arthur Smith is figuring out a way to get this team to win games. Okay, but the NFC South, like, the other teams behind the Falcons are nipping at their heels because, to me, the Saints had the biggest statement Mm. win yesterday to shut out the Las Vegas Raiders, no matter how challenging their season has been. To shut out any team over an entire game of football is so impressive. Uh, The Saints did not have playing yesterday Jameis Winston, Michael Thomas, Jarvis Landry, and Marshawn Lattimore. 24 to nothing. Uh, Everyone looks special. Kyle, how many... 
Alvin Kamara touchdowns had been scored by Alvin Kamara up until yesterday. Zero. And how many did he score yesterday? Three. He did score three <laughs> yesterday. The Saints punched three of them in behind Alvin Kamara. They looked fantastic. They are behind the Falcons, but this division is going to be really, really special and entertaining to watch down the stretch. Oh, my gosh. The defense, a shutout is a shutout. Yes. They, absolutely. I mean, 100%. the defense, that's the, that's the strength of their team. They needed that. Four yeah. sacks yeah. for the Saints defense, and they only allowed 183 yards. That's right. really good. You came out of nowhere last week and were like, Alvin Kamara's not being traded. He's a little out of character. Traded. I don't think he's being traded. Yeah, I don't think he is either. I, I, I feel like I'm pretty plugged into some yeah. teams. I don't think he's being traded. Peter. Um, Howie, I'm so thankful for this.